I ran a class a couple of months back. It was centered around the topic of how to become absolutely fear-proof, becoming free of worry, concern, anxiety, fear. It used to be listed privately on my website, but I wanted to make it available here on YouTube for you. So if you find yourself constantly dwelling in thoughts of fear and concern, watch today's video in full. It is such a powerful class. Today is the end of you living in fear. Watch the full class and please implement everything that you learn. Enjoy. Being free of concern. Because it is perhaps concern that is what keeps us on the surface of life. <clears throat> it is concern, worry, fear, which clouds any sort of receptivity to deeper understanding, knowing, experience. So first, take a second to acknowledge in your particular experience, what is the mind most concerned about always? What is a, a reason it finds for concern? For some, it may definitely be finances. For some, it's health. For some, it's their relationship. It's usually these three areas, right? But it may be something else too. So just take a moment to first acknowledge what is the, the main cause for the mind's restlessness? What is it concerned about? It could even be concerned about spiritual progress. Oftentimes we've been dwell dwelling in these teachings for a while and, and we're constantly like, you know, why don't I get it? Why don't I feel like I'm going quote unquote deeper or having any development and understanding the teaching? So that itself becomes a point of concern. So one thing we must realize is first, the uselessness of concern. You know, the other day, somebody, somebody commented on my uh, YouTube video from yes, uh, yesterday, which was all about turning away from the mind turning away from these sorts of ideas and fears. And that person said, but you know, what about physical illness? What about the, the fear that comes with pain or the fear that comes along with thinking about what may happen to the body? So see that how we f somehow find our concern, being concerned, useful. And this itself is a really big illusion. This itself is a really big... Um, thing to acknowledge because regardless of what your situation is, we must come to see that concern is not adding a, 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 even a penny of value. You know, we, we, we cling to our concern like I'm entitled to this concern. I'm entitled to this worrying because my situation is so real. I'm entitled to this fear because it is uncertain. Why do we cling to that concern? Why do we feel like there's some benefit there, some usefulness there? Because with or without concern, <laughs> things are changing. And it is not the concern and the being concerned and being fearful that produces any sort of solution or leads to a benefit, beneficial outcome. So the first thing is to see the uselessness of concern, of worrying, of fear. And then second is to acknowledge that being free from concern doesn't mean Rejecting concern. If a concern arises, a concern will arise. It will arise without your permission. Transcending concern 
equals your capacity to look at the concern arising and not believe in it and not care for it, not be interested in it. This is the subtle aspect, the subtle inclination to try, try to fathom what that could be. Because the mind says, but how do I do that? And then again, it just, that itself is, is a concern being looked at. You see, the, the, that which is aware of the concern arising is not itself concerned. The concern itself is the concern. It is itself concerned. And that is where we identify. That is where we establish our home. This I am. Not consciously, but this is, it, it, that is what the experience is. So the, the, the concern and the, the thing that says, how do I let go of being concerned or caring about this concern? They are both equally observed by that which is free of concern. So first we could write the first point that we made, seeing the uselessness in concern. That can even be done on a mental level. It is just very practical. It is very um, logical that within being concerned, there is no use. Now here, you may not necessarily know how to be free of it, but at least you start to see its uselessness. And this is always the first step. Only by seeing the uselessness of fear, of concern, can we then even be receptive to and motivated, motivated towards understanding how to be free of it. Otherwise, we will cling to it unconsciously. And this just goes for everything in your life, you know? When you see something, uh, when you see the uselessness of something, when you see this, the destructiveness of something, automatically you let it go. Only when there is an unconscious assumption or belief that this is, give, this is providing me value, then we continue to engage in that behavior. So the seeing the uselessness can even be done on a mental level. But the second has to be done on a level prior to mind. It cannot be, you can't think your way into that. But good news is it's even easier than thinking your way into it. Because even to think, right, you, you must be in a sort of active mode, like thinkingness. But this is to uh, this is what we call right this is relaxing into your true perspective the knowing in which this concern and even this other concern that says how do i be free of concern are both equally seen looked at so we could do a little bit of even a, a guidance for that okay So I haven't read the chat yet fully, so I don't know uh, exactly what is being said, but I want to stay stick to this point first. Um, regardless of if you can understand how to be free of concern later, right? You don't know how to maintain this. You don't know how to uh, be, be free of this tomorrow. You're like, I do it now, but then, or, or when I hear t conversations like this, or when I read things like this, but then later on, again, the mind comes. So forget later for now. Just for the time being that we're here together, just for the time being that you're watching this, uh, listening to this, right now, can you stop caring about what happens to this one? Just for the time being that you're here right now. For a moment, being free of concern about what this one might not get or what this one might lose, what happens to this one. Because notice how all your concern is about the person, about me as a body 
and this story, getting what I consider to be good what, what, and avoiding what I consider to be bad. That, that is the realm of concern. So just for the time being that we're here right now, regardless of if you have no money, regardless of if you have really poor health, declining, uh, regardless of if, if your partner is leaving you or, or your life is falling apart, just for the timing that we're here right now. Can you look at even your own situation? And just stop caring. Th this may seem to some like, oh my God, you're, you're, you know, making me d detached or cold but don't look at it in in that way it's not a sort of careless i always say it's it's more of a carefree just for right now also notice that if you stop caring for your life right now just for what an hour or so life will not fall apart so you could pick up your concern right after so you could even close your eyes if you'd like and just be free of for this moment, not trying to maintain or anything, but just for this moment, just not being concerned of what happens to poor little me or my life, if anything ever becomes of it. If I get what I want, materially or spiritually, If a thought says, you know, how do I do this? Don't even care for that thought. So you're not plunging into any other action right now, any other mental pursuit. Even the mind, which is like, how, okay, how do I do this? How do I pursue this? No, it is not even a pursuit. It is a, a, being, a, being carefree of even any mental pursuit to let go of this. If even for a moment we drop this baggage of concern, of worry, of fear, just by letting go of interest in our story, interest in the person that we take ourselves to be, automatically we are more receptive automatically there is a greater sense of rest of ease because the restlessness is it is within the constant incessant psychological chatter just bouncing around the walls of concern constant clinging to what is believed as good and constant resisting what is considered as bad. Obviously dividing the contents of this moment into, into that, but also then dwelling in concepts of future, past, and even dividing the contents over there. And, and just losing ourselves, losing our energy in scenarios which are just projection about what is and what could be. So sometimes when I ask someone to rest their concern, right, 
they say that's all fine and and nice to hear about but you're not facing reality and it's funny because it's actually quite the other way around when you venture off into your mental dialogue and scenarios and worry and concern and fear about what is that is you running away from what is that is you projecting onto what is your idea of what is and what could be it's all projection that is fantasy land if anything whereas dropping this for a moment you land on what is what is here and now and in the beginning when this teaching is being received the mind which is very logical which ha has somehow formed a logical opinion that being concerned leads to solution it's very resistant towards this but based on trust based on faith based on resonance if it practices this then it starts to, then it auto also starts to acknowledge that when you return to what is <laughs> as it is rather than forcing or imposing an idea upon what is about what it is then the mind itself is more receptive to what we right in previous calls we call it the natural intelligence so in this moment if there is a problem there is also a solution the same intelligence that that is out of which the the problem is made is the same intelligence right so we've all heard the quote where it's like the a desire has within itself the infinite intelligence to fulfill itself so just in that way any situation that is arising it's arising out of that same intelligence which has the capacity to solve yet even problem and solution are just on a mental level when you drop even the the psychological chatter then you're just left with right being aware and the movement which is which you are aware of and it happens seamlessly without the concern and so even the mind begins to recognize that it is ultimately much more effortless and easeful and and to to not be concerned and that the the concern is useless but this is the step we must take so what the mind who says that says how do i do this this is the step that it must take for this moment for right now stop caring so much about what happens and you think that maybe this is like the the worst thing you could do that it is the most unloving thing you can do but actually it is the most loving thing you can do because in carefreeness is inherent within it is creativity only because you are self-concerned only because we're self-concerned we're constantly building walls around us trying to protect us trying to preserve what we have little bit we have accumulated and trying to just gain more and avoid losing this that is if anything the most selfish thing we can do all concern in this way is very selfish stepping out of concern into carefreeness naturally that spontaneity that excitement that creativity that love manifests itself in our thought in our feeling in our action in our world that we experience
you can take a look at anybody who's ever done something uh, great for the world. Did they do it out of self-preservation, self-concern? No, anything requires you to step out of self-concern. And it, it's funny because what is required, like that trust is so necessary. It's like the, it requires you to take, it is what is required to take that first step. But once you take the first step, right, the mind starts to see. The mind also starts to acknowledge. It also becomes purified of its many negative residual impressions, which were clouding this capacity. So that is the the, the first message for that I would like to really invite you uh, to practice is first start seeing the uselessness of concern. Stop feeling entitled to fear, to feel fearful, to feel anxious. It will still be there. You know, once you start to see its uselessness, it may still be there, and that's fine. Don't battle against it either. Notice how none, none of what we discuss is ever launching an attack on what is being experienced. But see it, that dwelling in these scenarios is useless. And second, trust and take a leap of faith and stop caring so much about what happens to me. If there is a, a mental scenario about, you know, something really bad happening to you, just open yourself up to the possibility that that may happen. Because either way, it is a possibility. We somehow feel like if I fear that and I don't think about it and I don't, I don't um, acknowledge it even, or I reject that possibility, then that, that it ceases to be a possibility. But no, anything is possible. So accept the possibility of the worst. D don't start dwelling in that. But just it's just an openness. It is just a ability to let life flow where it needs to. Be open to never getting what you want. Again, and notice the concerns that arise because, because of this statement. And be able to look at those concerns and turn away and, and not be so interested in pursuing those concerns, those questions. That is the, the main thing. Something like this is said, and then like a, so many resistances, questions come up, and you care for it. And this is what keeps you entangled in the concern. Be able to see, and we all ha we have that, that capacity. We don't need more years of spiritual practice to cultivate that capacity. We have the capacity to see this concern of even how do I do this? Acknowledge that and don't be so interested in pursuing. Be interested in being interested itself. Be, be interested in that, that you are aware of it arising and that you do not need to pursue it. Be interested in the, that which is aware that which sees it, and perhaps even question, see if at the core of my experience, right, that which is aware of this concern, is that one concerned? And, and then the mind that says, I can't fathom how to not be concerned, right, that, then it starts to be then this itself starts to dissolve, this idea. Because this idea is arising on behalf of the cloudedness that is already here. So as we begin to inquire into the nature of that which is aware, is that one concerned? Right, The cloudedness is all automatically dispersing. Therefore, there's clarity. And in clarity, there, there is no room for concern. And by practicing this, we see that stepping out of our concern, we are always, even with the concern, but even without the concern, we are always imbued with the, the strength, the endurance, the intelligence to go through whatever has currently arisen.
manifested. The concern is all about like what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen. But stepping out of concern, it's ultimate simplicity. You are here dealing with what is, not even dealing with, you know? That again is like a sort of a mental notion that I, so this has to be dealt with into a solution. But here and now, the fact of the matter is, is just contents. Whatever the story of it is, you are imbued with the intelligence, the strength, the capacity to experience this. And so you step out of that concern, which is also just one content within awareness. You step into your more essential nature as the knowing in which this whole flow of experiences arising and passing. So not only is this concern the biggest obstacle in any material, physical pursuit, any goal, personal, but even spiritual, it, it, is, it is this concern which keeps us on the surface, which even makes our spiritual search just a means to some better experience or to be free uh, of, of loss. You know, get hopefully through my spiritual practice, I'll become so peaceful and detached or happy that I will no longer ha uh, lose or I, I will, you know, just some, some sort of idea about what it will bring you. So see, just uh, the rest of this call uh, while we're here together, if you can just totally stop caring about what happens to this one. If this one understands something that is being said today, if this one gains something, um, if it ever gets what it wants, just being open to that possibility that I may never get what I want. And, and still just being here at, at peace. If you can't be at peace, just be. <laughs> Soon you will see. That that itself is right, peace. So let me go go through some of the things that you said. Uh, Ivan said, "Concern about the future mainly. Such and such thing may happen, and as a result, I will suffer great emotional pain." And you have suffered great emotional pain. And notice that when you had to suffer great emotional pain, you, you suffered it, you went through it, and it passed. So that's, right, you're becoming the open container. Whatever experience is flowing through, let it. When you don't divide, you don't suffer. When you don't draw a line in between, this I want to experience, this I don't, this I cling to, this I resist, then... Concern vanishes, and also you just experience what is experienced, and it passes. And then there can be some receptivity to understand what is, in what is this appearing? As what at, am I aware of this? And you say, last year my business made as much money as I, it would take me 10 years to make through my regular employment salary. I'm still concerned that I may fail and end up poor on the street. I'm still not sure of the right way of overcoming concern, fear, and anxiety, but change in your external circumstances is not one of them, tested and proven. For most, we must test and prove ourselves but it's also enough to learn from other people's experience. For me personally, I also had to get it tested and proven. Until you, start, until, until you believe that it is experience that will lead to happiness or experience that will lead to peace, experience that will lead to the end of restlessness, we will stay in, in pursuit of experience, one over the other, this over that. And we will make the spiritual search 
without knowing it, we feel like we're being genuine, but still it is a very personal approach. It's I am, I am trying to become, uh, you know, trying to find my true nature to have it, it's you want the experience. So yeah, it, it's, it, that is a beautiful discovery that even, you know, something that the mind, let's say the mind, when, when you have no money, the mind is like, when I have all this money, then I will truly feel safe, secure, happy, free of concern. But then you go through a, a very uh, um, intense process. You, you make the money and you have what you wanted, but then still you see that the mind is still restless, insecure, and concerned, fearful. And so you start to see that, yes, you know, experience, be what it may, it, it does not lead to any peace. Because how can experience, like any, any experience gained or lost, cannot remove the lackful impression within mind, the lackful impressions of being a separate so-and-so in charge of its own existence. This lackful impression itself is what creates all concern, all restlessness. Right? We often discuss the eight worldly concerns, the, the pleasure, pain, gain, loss, prestige and disgrace, praise or blame. These are the eight sort of concerns that keep the mind in restlessness. And if these, re if these concerns are just replenishing themselves through this con uh, constant psychological chatter, then yes, you will sometimes get what you want and sometimes don't get what you want. And regardless of if you get everything you want and regardless of if you lose everything, these concerns will remain. So even if you get everything you want, if, these, if the mind is not free, purified of these impressions, these concerns, then our, even then we suffer even our paradise. And so... This isn't to motivate you to no longer care about experience. No, like we have a duty to experience as well. We, we are doing our work. We are achieving whatever, but do it with this foundation that no experience is, is making me peaceful or happy. And don't expect that out of experience. When you don't expect that out of experience, only then can we now enjoy the highs and also enjoy the lows or suffer the lows or, I mean, uh, experience the lows yet not suffer them. Only then are we fully full to go through the ups and downs. Otherwise, again, right? It's that divide, good and bad, want, don't want. You could even divide the eight concerns into just two. Cravings, desires, and then resistances, fears. So, so no experience has the capacity to dissolve this uh, restlessness. This is an inward journey we must take. The experience may have its capacity to wake you up to this understanding that no experience will dissolve this, but the experience cannot do it for you. We must right, look inward away from the concern as that, that's what I meant earlier when I said the concerns keep us on the surface level of life. Um, they keep us on the top of the ocean, just entertained by the waves, but the ocean has infinite depths. So we just remain entertained by this wave rising, subsiding, crashing, foam, this, that, this, that, just the forms. But ultimately we, we, and we feel like right, everything has its own independent existence, each wave for its own, not realizing it's all water, not realizing the, the, just the underlying reality. And so that's a very powerful discovery.
You say, uh, how do you break the association of imagining future, adva imagining adverse future scenario with anticipation of emotional pain? You step out of the scenario altogether. Just stop caring to produce these scenarios. And if they arise, just learn to turn away. You have this capacity. And, and it comes down to the same two things. See the uselessness in these scenarios and then learn to stop caring about what, how it turns out. Notice how in, in here in this moment, whatever happens, happens. You go through it. This is such a simple little fact, but it, it is monumental. Everything that the mind is nervous about in the future, even when it happens, in that moment, it just happens and it also passes. And it always is, is fine. Even if it's great pain, it, you know, it, it passes. So don't need to anticipate pain and then ask, how do I uh, be okay with this anticipated pain? Just stop anticipating or regretting past, future. And again, when you, when you form this carefree attitude about what happens, then there is automatically less anticipation and regret. The uncertainty aspect of life, which is the most exciting part of life, stops being a, a reason for uh, suffering. I think in Vedantic terms, they call it vairagya, meaning this passion towards experience. Understanding to not crave experience or resist experience. Truly understanding that experience cannot change me experience cannot I, I, that i have nothing to gain or lose from experience this is the the quality to ponder that even it, it is such a thing because you have this conversation outside people will think you're crazy that how how could you not care deeply and be concerned about what happens it may be normal right? Because everybody's doing it, but it is not natural. It is all fabrication, all psychological. Nathan said, when you said, can I be okay with never getting X money? or experiencing why for the rest of my life, I notice for myself that the mind was resistant of going there. I see now that I have to see and sit with that and feel the discomfort. And, and notice, right? The mind is, uh, it, it resists even, it resists even entertaining the possibility that I may never get this, or I may never have that. And somehow it thinks that just because you, you're, you're, you continue to suppress the possibility of that, that you know, you're more safe, you're more secure, it's more likely that it will happen. Actually, quite the opposite is true. So in many teachings, and, and you've probably heard this too, in many teachings they say if, if as long as this belief in, in that experience can bring me something, that I have something to gain or that I have something to lose, this is our bondage. This is what keeps the mind restless within those concerns, completely covering up the nature of reality. There's a quote by Nisargadatta Maharaj. He said, um, as long as you are as you as long as you are 
so interested in what happens, you'll have little time to get to the root. <laughs> and, and it's so true. And so see that you can acknowledge that possibility, Nathan, and, and just be completely f free of caring if you get this or that, and then just continue your work without that concern, without that care, and see perhaps how that affects your work and how your work here and now stops being a means to an end always, you know, because the mind is very, very... Uh, it's just a reflex to make everything, even let's say something like this conversation, as a means to a better end, a stepping stone towards something that I consider good. And in that way, it also just dilutes this, uh, this current experience. It filters the experience through restlessness. So many of these things, especially when they're just newly being heard, being received, just uh, we just got to have the willingness to test it out. And then the, the best part about this, right, is like we see in direct experience almost instantly that, yes, when I do rest these concerns, not only am I more peaceful, feeling lighter, but the quality of my doing itself um, becomes better. So we try to maintain these concerns and then try to meditate, you know, then try to inquire. Even the inquiry and the meditation we do through this filter of gain and loss. So actually, let's just throw this filter out and then see, you know, because experience will still happen. Things will still come and go. That which says, I have trouble accepting this, look at that and stop caring about even that. Stop being so interested in even this. Stop believing in even this notion. That is you seeing the wave from the depth of the ocean. It's barely visible, barely relevant. Chandra said, once after distancing from concern by acknowledging it is going away for that moment and free of concern, what do I do after? Do whatever you please. <laughs> whatever there is to do, do that. Because with concern, right? Everything is, um, everything is a means to an end. Everything is good or bad, everything is leading to my goal or not leading to my goal, helping me protect or not helping me protect. So our activity itself is very, very filtered through those things. So once you are distancing yourself from concern, which itself is not going to be a one-time thing, right? You'll see that because these are what we call the residual impressions in mind. They will continue to arise, continue to have subtle or deeper pulls and it is your capacity to observe these concerns arising and again not being interested not going there not giving them the, the identification and the belief they desire or that they demand and so this you will learn in the the new self-inquiry lectures as you're going through the course learning to lose belief in mind, this concern that arises or this fear that arises or this confusion that arises, saying whatever it's saying, right? Cutting off this belief 
severing the association, the desire to engage, to pursue. Because the moment we pursue, the moment we engage, it's just more and more thoughts. And right, that those are the clouds which completely cloud this seeing. And so you see like the example that we did the other day, it was like, this concern arises and it's just, okay, right? This is the, this is your attention, just lighting up these concerns, just lighting up these thoughts. All, all it sees is just what it is lighting up. This and that and this and that, and it's very scattered. And so what we are becoming more interested in is where's the light coming from, right? As what, like what is the source of this light rather than what it is lighting up, not even in the light itself, your attention. We're, we're interested in what is the source of this light? And the moment you become uh, curious about that, the moment you are contemplating that, the moment you are aware that you are aware and you're, you're interested in being aware rather than being interested in what you are aware of in that moment, the, the light itself subsides into its source, knowing, being aware, right? So this is a key component of this. Rather than being interested in what the light is lighting up, being interested in the, the source of the light, right? Which is the question, who am I? As what am I aware? What is it that is aware? that which is aware of this concern that is being lit up, is that one concerned? So you see, you're, you're objectifying your concern. Previously, the concern arose as what I am. I am this concern. You see that we, we wear that suit. And, but so you're re recognizing, it's, it's verifiable in your direct experience that the concern, whatever it may be, is an object of seeing it is an object being lit up so be interested rather than in the object that is being lit up and the story of it because that's very very colorful right very very stimulating and all that we've really ever paid attention to but now you're you're becoming curious as okay what is the source of this knowing knowing what is this what is this light or in in our scenario it's as what am I aware of this thought or this concern? And that instantly concern vanishes, even if it's for, for a moment. When you become aware that you are aware, whatever you are aware of as the object vanishes for that moment. It may, right, attention may go outward again, and then it, again it appears, this concern or this thought or some other thought. But the moment you acknowledge, I am aware. You are aware of being aware rather than aware of something. And the more we subside the attention in, inward in this way, the more that capacity to see this concern or that concern and not believe in its story or its scenario or, or be so interested in it, that capacity increases more and more and more. And these residual impressions continue to become weaker. The mind continues to be purified. Because again, in order for these concerns, these fears, these jealousies, these all these, all the stuff, right? The psychological stuff. It needs your constant attention on the psychological chatter. And the psychological chatter is what is recreating always. These, it is keeping intact this sense of personal identity and also these residual impressions, which you experience here and then you experience here, then you experience here, then you experience here. So when we give in to the concerns, when we believe in the concerns, when we act on the concerns, we are further entangling ourselves into this illusion. 
when we remain as we are, when we are interested in that which is aware, when we are turning away from the concern, stepping into trust, stepping into being, knowing, you're, right, it's that polishing cloth and you're purifying the, the, these mental impressions, the mind. In many spiritual teachings, they say the mind is becoming a perfect mirror rather than a mirror with many, um, all this dirt and blemishes. <clears throat> uh, you're talking about being in the moment in a way yeah and it's just that what does it mean to be in the moment right what does it mean to be present it means that the the observer is not dormant lost clouded in what it is ob observing it means to to knowingly be observing so the observer is awake there's a knowing of of being aware Uday, I'm not sure what your question was. I don't think you uh, fully wrote it out. So you can write that again if you'd like. But I'll get to Doris's question. Doris said, but how can I not care about wanting better health or some experience that I now enjoy? For instance, when I have a day where I, I feel good and my body is definitely, in my body, it is definitely a good day and something I'd rather feel than a day where I feel terrible. Well, the first step is trying. You know, how can I not care? See if it is your care, your deep concern, that is producing these when the body is feeling good. So that is the, the, the main first thing, right? Acknowledging the uselessness of concern. We feel in order to experience, so even right being attached to experience and, or wanting to feel good, that's fine. But feeling that in order to feel good and experience what I want to experience, I must deeply care. This is the illusion. In truth, your experience will flow between what the mind considers good and bad, always, regardless. You cannot stop this aspect of it, no matter how aware you become even. But this deep care about what is being experienced is the element which creates suffering because it's you dividing experience in half. So obviously, you'd rather have the body feeling light and pleasant rather than unpleasant. But it is the deep attachment to wanting so that produces suffering. So the body may be suffering or not suffering, but the mind is always suffering. And so this is the step to be worked on. The mind which says, how can I not care? Are you able to look at even that concern, right? We're not, stop being concerned so much about what happens on the surface. Let the body do its thing. Let it feel good when it wants to. Let it feel bad when it wants to. And even, right, the action to, to make the body feel good or not, like, let that happen. But your main thing is not on the surface. Your main interest is no longer on the surface. Be interested in, as what am I seeing even this concern arise? And if that, from where I am aware, 
that which is aware, is that at all concerned? So just stop trying to move to words and experience where you are going to be better. Start to see through the illusion of that. Because even when you move through the, to the experience that you feel like is going to be better, there will always be more experience to move towards that is better. Why? Because that is the nature of this. That is the, the, the wisdom being cultivated, seeing that no matter how much I crawl towards experience and this pleasant experience and that pleasant experience, it also passes. So what, what we end up wanting to do is we want to eternalize good experience. We want to eternalize feeling good. But that we're fighting against the very nature of experience. It will always have this dualistic element. And so letting go of the concern is just resting in understanding of its flow and allowing it to be as it is. But rather, you, as what are you allowing it to be as it is? Thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like to go even deeper into this, I'm running a class on my website right now. It's called Awaken to Your Formless Self. It's up there free for a limited time. If you want to watch it, I would highly recommend it. It was going to help you go so much deeper into this and apply this teaching into your life even more. Really help you wake up to what that practice entails and how to bring depth to the practice and understanding. So again, it's called Awaken to Your Formless Self, free for a limited time. Please uh, go check it out. I'll link it down below in the description box below. And also, if this is something that you need my personal assistant with, assistance with, if you feel like you need the consistent guidance and support with this practice so that you can deepen your understanding and practice of self-inquiry and dissolve mind identification, awaken to who you truly are prior to the self-image and become free from suffering your experience, you can learn more about my School of Awakening. I'll link that down below as well. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.